Nintendo 64 games are some of the hardest games to play today. The games didn't run that well on the original N64 hardware, so emulating them on modern hardware takes a lot of work, either from the community or from Nintendo themselves. But one of the biggest hurdles to overcome is the controller. Adapting an N64 game's controls to modern control sticks sometimes breaks the game, or oftentimes just flat out makes them uncomfortable. Oftentimes, it's more convenient to just use an N64 controller. Prior to Nintendo 64 games coming to Nintendo Switch Online, there was a grand total of one Nintendo 64 game on the Switch. It was Turok. So there wasn't really a lot of demand for Nintendo 64 controllers to work on the Switch. Now, there's a ton of great options. I personally like something like the Retro Fighters controller that makes the N64 controller layout feel a little more modern without breaking anything. But I understand people might want a more authentic experience. For that real authentic Nintendo 64 experience on the Switch, you previously had really two options. The first one was this controller adapter by Hyperkin that adapts the N64 input to a USB input. I'm sure you can just plug this in and everything will work just fine these days, but back in the day when I first used this, you had to do some wacky controller configuration to get this to work. It's only 20 bucks. The other option is to buy that new Nintendo 64 controller that Nintendo made that is actually a fantastic recreation of the original controller from over 25 years ago. But that thing is a whopping $50 always out of stock and requires a Nintendo Switch Online subscription in order to even buy it. They have a whole display of these controllers at the Nintendo store in New York City, but you can't buy them there. You have to go online and buy it through your subscription. Now, 8BitDo has a very interesting solution. They didn't release their own controller, although I think they still should. They released a mod kit for the original Nintendo 64 controller. It's a whole new board for your existing original Nintendo 64 controller. It transforms your old controller into a Bluetooth Nintendo Switch controller. It even comes with a rumble pack that mimics the same additional buttons that the official modern Nintendo 64 controller adds. But not only that, they also threw in a new thumbstick. Remember the original Nintendo 64's thumbstick, how it's all thin and wobbly and gets all gross really easily? Actually, yeah, this one feels kind of good. Well, this new one is thick like a GameCube controller and hole sensing, so it will not get all wobbly or even drift. It's the perfect replacement. And I know what some of you are thinking. I don't want to like pick up a screwdriver. I don't want to do any work. I just want to buy something that works. Well, pause for a second. You'll be happy to know that this is the easiest mod that I've ever done. You literally just remove a couple of screws, you pop the whole board out and pop a new one in, and you're done. You're ready to go. This somehow turned into potentially the best way to play N64 games on the Switch. This video is sponsored by Opal. Hey guys, thanks for meeting with me today. Bob, are you all right? Your webcam's not looking too hot. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, I'm just using the built-in one today. All right, whatever. Zim, on the other hand, is looking fantastic. Look at that guy. I still don't get why he works here. He's a dog. Oh, you're just jealous because he performs better. He literally doesn't. He's oh, a dog. Looks like he doesn't you got do yourself a work He hasn't rival done anything there. here for years. He doesn't do anything here. No, I pick up all I the slack. I'm for the one. A second. Everything he does, you do don't just gets thrown here. He does all your work. He doesn't do anything. Pick it up. Your God, slack. You don't know I will get you, Zim. He works on his own merit. Straw. That man works you. by his own merit. I would support him a hundred times over the likes of you. This is the Opal C1. One of its features is a looping video. So if you're in a long, boring conference call or class, you can just loop the video to make it look like you're a star employee. But the reason it's been so popular lately and the reason why I'm even interested in it in the first place is the quality. You might have noticed that I'm using it to film this right here. It's got a half inch sensor, the largest sensor ever in a dedicated webcam. The lens is an f1.8, which is what allows for real bokeh, but the software can also include some artificial blur. And it's got build quality to match. Look, the lens cap is also a little lens cleaner. 
that's convenient. I've always been a little bit frustrated by webcams. In in the notes that Opal gave me, they referenced the C920, which was the best webcam that you could get for years. And that thing came out in 2012. So it was about time somebody tried to change the game a little bit. So as somebody who has four capture devices plugged into their computer right now, this might help simplify things for me a little bit. There's currently no software for Windows. So if you have a Mac, you could try it for yourself at the link in the description below. Maybe this can help you up the quality of your conference calls, or at the very least, help you sleep through those boring ones. So this mod kit comes with the board, the hall sensing thumbstick, a stopper for where the original cable used to be, a USB-C charging cable, the rumble pack, and a convenient screwdriver. Now, I always use either this iFixit or this Hoto automatic screwdriver, this screwdriver felt just a tad bit small, so I ended up using a slightly larger bit for a majority of this mod, but I do appreciate when they include a screwdriver in a kit like this, because sometimes there's some deep screws that my fancy screwdriver just can't fit into. And it costs almost nothing for the manufacturer to just include one in the kit, so I appreciate it. It also lowers the barrier to entry, so anybody can just do this mod. You don't need anything, it comes with everything. The rumble pack thing that it comes with has a USB-C port for charging only. I tried using this to connect to a computer and it just didn't work at all. It has a home button, a share button, a sync button, and ZR. Because that's something an OG N64 controller is lacking. When playing Nintendo Switch Online, ZR is what brings up the menu. So it's really not so bad having it up and out of the way. The back of the rumble pack also has a mode switch to swap between switch mode and I think D input. Officially, this only works for Nintendo Switch and Android, but I was able to use D input to connect to my MacBook and play Nintendo 64 through open EMU just fine, which might be another great reason to get this. So I have this weird thing where I don't like to mod any of the devices that I have from my past or, or especially my childhood. It's why my original Game Boy that would look a lot better if I just swapped out the case and put a new screen in there. It just looks like absolute shit these days because I, I, I like how rough it looks. It shows that it was well loved. So I bought an N64 controller off of eBay just to do this. There's a ton of fake ones on there. They're very obviously fake. And you know what? I'm sure those would work just fine with this mod too. But if you want an authentic one, you should just make sure that it has the little Nintendo logo there, among other very obvious things. A regular authentic used N64 controller seems to be going for somewhere around $30 at like the cheaper end, which is not that cheap. It ends up bringing this whole mod kit up to over the price of just buying the official modern N64 controller off of Nintendo Switch Online. So this is not the cheaper option if you factor all of those things together. I also decided to get an ice one because I thought the color was really cool. I didn't realize that this one was $70. It's mint too. It felt a little wrong mutilating this one, but honestly, the rarity comes from the ice-colored case, not the innards. I could always reuse these innards for something else. Which brings up a great point. If you're buying a controller just to do this mod, you don't need a working one, because you're replacing pretty much everything here. Really, all you need is the case, the buttons, and the membrane for those buttons. That's it. You're replacing the cable, you're replacing the whole board, you're replacing the thumbstick. The most frequent damage you'll see to an N64 controller is the thumbstick or the cable getting ripped or frayed in some way. And you don't need any of those things, so you could just straight up get a broken one. These broken controllers seem to be going for around $12 to $15 on eBay, so just get yourself one of those. I'm gonna do that so that I can take the innards from the old perfectly working N64 controller and put them in uh, one that didn't work so I can just fix an old one up, keep things, you know, keep more N64 controllers in circulation. I don't like ruining things. I'll probably buy one at Too Many Games this weekend. I'm going to Too Many Games this weekend. It's a convention in Philly that has all a bunch of retro stuff. I'm doing a signing on Friday and a panel on Saturday. So if you're in the Pennsylvania area, 
uh, come hang out this weekend. Or by the time you're watching this, it's probably too late. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at announcing things. You know, I'm not too sure what to say about the actual mod process. For the first time in my life, I used just the instructions that were provided to me in the box. They seemed easy enough. My only critique of the process is that the Z trigger and the shoulder button boards were a bit annoying to reseat back in the case. The case was also a little hard to close up. Also, don't forget the cable plug. That's easy to forget. But once it was all screwed together, it was solid. Like nothing ever happened. I can't stress enough just how easy this mod was. It could take you as little as like 15 to 20 minutes to complete from start to finish. It took me a little longer than that because I was just around with chat. After you close up the case, you're also gonna need to put this little rumble pack thing in. Syncing controllers to a Nintendo Switch can be a pain in the ass. This came right up, like it was always meant to be connected. Don't forget to hit the start button to turn the controller on. It also came up as a Nintendo 64 controller, to my surprise. I have mixed feelings about this. It's cool because that's how the official Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller acts. So the Nintendo Switch Online app will recognize this controller the same way. So all of the little UI quirks work in the same way. All of the button configurations are just perfectly synced the way that Nintendo wants you to use them. It's also cool to just be able to identify which controller on the Switch is registered as your N64 controller. If you have other controllers plugged in like some Joy-Cons or something, they'll, they'll show up with a little graphic. That's cool. But this also means you can't remap any of the buttons using the Switch OS. Hopefully Nintendo allows button configuration in the Switch Online app eventually. I've been begging for this for years now. Overall, I think it's probably a little better that the 8 Do mod acts this way, because if you truly want that authentic Nintendo 64 experience, you probably aren't going to want to be changing around the controls anyway, but it'd be nice to have the option. Everything about playing with this controller was great. The thumbstick is calibrated very well. It feels nice and smooth. The octagonal gates feel really harsh, but that's kind of the way the N64 was. Now you have just a little more control before you hit those dead zones. There's even a middle click that does absolutely nothing. Playing Goldeneye was great, but after playing a decent amount of Mario 64, something didn't feel right. And after a lot of strange directional inputs and referencing the thumbstick calibration back and forth, I realized there's nothing wrong. This is just how the N64 feels. I used to dabble a little bit in Mario 64 speedrunning, and when I was into that, I used a Pro Controller on the Switch, because that thumbstick feels way better. You have way more control. So it's not really the controller's fault. This is just how Nintendo 64 controllers are. I just really am not used to it. I will say though, these gates do feel a lot harsher than, than this. You know what it is? It's the up and the down. It's just so harsh compared to this one. The diagonals are, are pretty harsh on here, but it's the up and the down that just sucks you in. You're really going forward if you hit up. The only other notable problem that I had was the Z button had to be pressed pretty hard. The original rubber membrane that I had to reuse wasn't seated very well. This wasn't really an issue in Goldeneye, but I decided to fix it anyway. Now it plays fine. However, I did notice that Pressing it on the right side of the Z button, it barely registers the press. But if I press it on the left side, it registers every press. This is fine because I'm always gonna be holding it from the left side anyway, because that's where my left hand goes. Maybe in the future they could provide additional rubber membranes because that Z button one was kind of hard to get reseated on their board. You kind of need an N64 styled controller if you're gonna be playing N64 games. A game like Goldeneye needs those C buttons. And the more options we have, the better. I think if you want the most authentic experience on a modern console, this is definitely the way to get it. And you don't have to swap out that thumbstick if you want the most authentic experience with all of the shittiness that comes with it. I hope that 8 do sells some of these pieces separately in the future so I can get just the stick because I'd like to use that in more stuff. Holy shit, they do and it's only $20.
This whole kit is only available for pre-order right now. It goes on sale July 5th. And if you're watching this after July 5th, please use my affiliate link in the description below. Thank you so much. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. What do you guys think about 8-Bit Do's new mod kit for an original Nintendo 64 controller? Is this something that you would want to do to play your Nintendo Switch Online games on the Switch? Your games like your Mario's, like your GoldenEye, like uh, the Pokemon Stadium with, with none of the cool stuff that comes with Pokemon Stadium? Mario Party, some of the worst, most useless games Nintendo has ever made? Anyway, leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you, Opal, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out if you're interested. Don't forget to check me out at Too Many Games if you're in the area. Don't forget to check out this shirt over at wolfdenapparel.com. Don't forget to check out this Twitch streams every once in a while. The most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. Share this video with a friend. A friend who's got some extra N64 controllers laying around. Maybe they'll let you borrow one. Thank you very much. Have a good week.